Hey everybody, welcome to Scott's Creations. Today our situation is the wife got uh, cable internet. Currently we have the TV antenna come through the cable house. So now we have both those signals and I want them the same coax. Uh, I've read that the signals will screw with each other. The house commander heard from the cable company that they're separate. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a splitter in out of the cable box, see what happens, and then we'll go from there. Alright guys, let's get started. Alright, so currently the cable is hooked up. And the antenna is disconnected. This is coming in from the antenna. And you have the cable hooked up and the cable internet working. So this is coming from the ground. This is going to the house. So we need to put this guy in and uh, split the signals. So if we install it here, it should work for both. Let me uh, get the tripod and we'll do this. Okay, I'll try to stick my fat hands out of the way. So what we need to currently do is disconnect the cable coming in from the house. Or going into the house, excuse me. Put our splitter in. So this is coming from the ground. Put the cable in. Oh, that's backwards. Give me. So this is coming in the internet from the cable. And this is the TV antenna coming from the back of the house. I like to say it's trouble giving me trouble because there's a million people watching me, but I'm guessing there's like six. So there, see? Just got to think about it like that. It goes right on. So now we should have these two being combined, and we're going to send it into the house. Alright. So cable coming from the ground. Antenna come from the back of the house, one coax going to the uh, going into the house. So the cable company said that we should be able to combine both these signals and it should work. Um, what I read is it's not gonna, but uh, we'll see. Let's go see what's going on inside. Okay guys, so I think this is a pretty uh, pretty normal setup. All the cables are coming in from uh, two under the front of the stairs. So this is our coming in from the outside. And this is going out to our TV. So we got the little booster here. Um, so what we're going to need to do is build a little jumper to connect the TV booster to our main cable. And let's go do that. All right, guys. So uh, just hooking that up. I already know that the cable internet isn't working. So but let's just try this anyway. See if the TV will work, just for uh, good measure. So we got a couple connectors um, on the back of the box. It'll give you the directions for the cut. In this case, it's going to be quarter inch, quarter inch. So, we're not going to get crazy with this, but uh, we'll mark our first quarter inch. We're going to take it all the way down to the conductor. Not too crazy. It's not the space shuttle, but uh, we do a decent job. So, personally, I don't have the right strippers. You can get them. I just use a utility knife. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut all the way to the conductor. That should be the normal part you see sticking out of it. Not quiet, give it another shot. Got a few stragglers, no problem, cut those off. Just do a little measurement. Then that perfect. It's pretty close, close enough for this. So uh, you can see just the conductor sticking out now. That's what you see sticking out of the end of the connector. Now we're going to cut the jacket off a quarter inch. And that's just, the, on this case, it's the white jacket. So we're not going to want to cut too deep. Just score it pretty much. Because we don't want to cut the um, shielding off. The shielding is just like a metal shield that protects the signal. Not really there. 
give it a slice in the end. Give it enough. And you get stronger than me. And peel that back. Now we'll find our shield. See it coming back? Just layer out, hold it back over. So the shield will make contact from connector to connector. Here's the connector. I'm not going to get crazy. Um, I'm not even going to terminate it right now because we don't know if this is going to work. Just put it on there. You can trim it later if you want to. But you see, it's like a regular coax. Both the bend. It's big. All right, do it one more time, real quick. The other side, quarter inch to the conductor. Jacket again, quarter inch. No, it's just uh, close enough for hand grenades. Jacket, quarter inch. Score it again all the way around. Shield, pull it back over the jacket. And put the connector on. Alright, so that's what we got. Uh, this isn't good enough for our experiment, so we'll give it a try. Alright guys, we're back under the series. We're going to install our little jumper here just to test the TV antenna. I don't think it's going to work, obviously, because the cable doesn't work, but uh, just for good measure, we'll do it and see what we got. I'm going to prop the camera up here. Hopefully you can see. I promise nothing. Alright, so this is our booster to the antenna, or to the TV, excuse me, from the antenna. pretty idiot proof to TV to the antenna and we'll hook it up to the splitter okay we're all hooked up let's try the TV all right guys so as you can see we have no signal from the antenna um, I don't know if you guys are cable cutters if you have the channel master it's kind of nice to have a DVR it's not cheap but uh, it's nice to be able to record football which is all we really watch on TV anyway, but uh, let's try uh, Plan B. Okay, guys, this is Plan B. We're gonna use diplexers. Um, never used them before. Don't know if it's gonna work. Get this bag out here. But you can see. So we have in or out. Doesn't really matter. Sat, which is gonna be our cable, and antenna, which is your TV antenna. From what I understand, is the signal comes in from both. They're combined, and then you put another one in there and split them back out again. Um, Let's go give it a shot. I don't know what's going to happen. All right, guys. We're back on the side of the house. We're going to remove our cable splitter, which failed us miserably. So we're removing the TV antenna right now. And removing the cable coming in from the ground. And we'll disconnect it from the cable going into the house. Now we're going to install our diplexer with the caps. So first is going to be in and out. This is going to go into the house. And this is where you got to have the signals, right? Because you got to match on both sides. So first sat, which is going to be our cable in from the ground.
an antenna, which is our TV antenna. They're color coded too, red and black. Alright, let's go do another the same thing in the house. Alright, guys, we are back under the stairs um, to put the diplexer in coming in from the house. So we're going to redisconnect the cable coming in from the house. And we're going to install our diplexer on the in and outside. I'm going to remove the jumper we made earlier. And on the diplexer, on the red side, the satellite side, which in this case is cable, we're going to hook it up. Just an experiment, right? We'll do that permanently if uh, this works. All right. So now our problem is uh, our TV antenna needs to hook up to there, so we're gonna need another jumper. So I'll go make one real quick. I won't force you to do that, and I'll be right back. Hi right, guys, I just built a little pretty. Uh, pretty rough jumper to put in there just to test it <clears throat> but uh, with this current configuration we have no internet and we have no TV so uh, the diplexers are a miserable failure um, I'm gonna break it back down and make sure both work individually and uh, go from there hey guys we're installed the diplexers at the cable box and under the stairs completely installed no cable no antenna not super surprising why would the cable company want you to get free TV but uh, the solution would probably be to bring the cable through uh, the house from the antenna as a rental house, so I can't do that. Um, but I do want to show you what I would have done with that coax jump that I built if uh, if it was going to be a permanent installation. Um, you can go get the crimpers. I'm not going to do that because I do it very rarely. But uh, this is what I All right, guys. So if that had worked successfully and I was going to make those little cables permanent without going to buy the crimp tool, which I probably wouldn't do if I only do this every now and again, i give the old hog jaw crimp, a little heat shrink on there. Give a little love. Still a hexagonal crib, just gotta do it a few more times. Slide the shrink on. If you have a heat gun, If you don't have a heat gun, use an alternate heating device. Takes a little while longer, but you'll get the job done. My flame's dying out of here. We're pretty good. Grab a better lighter, real quick. Alright, let's try this. The big, right? See, it shrinks out nice. trying to do, right? Takes a little while, but it works. Why buy a heat gun to do this once, you know? So you can see that was a little tighter and nicer, but that works, right? It's on there. It's not going anywhere. And that would work for you. 
All right, guys. Uh, kind of a bummer, but what are you gonna do, huh? Yeah, this is just a quick recap. Uh, we wanted to try to put two signals down the co the coax into the house, the TV antenna and the cable internet. Um, we tried first. We tried a normal cable splitter. Uh, it didn't work. Neither worked. Then we tried diplexers on both sides of the cable where we brought the signals together and broke them back out. That didn't work either. Uh, it's a miserable bummer, but uh, I think what I do is uh, punch a hole in the house and bring a uh, cable from the antenna directly in. It's a rental, so I can't do it. But that's what I do if I were you. Um, I guess we'll get ready for some more videos and see you guys next time. Bye.